So I decided lying there with my broken leg that this, this was my path. I'm going to follow my bliss hmm. and see where doors open. Mm -hmm. And, and so I decided, well, fly fishing is it. Welcome to Big Fish Stories, the podcast dedicated to telling the real outdoor stories of adventure, hunting, and fishing. For those of you who get lost in the stories around the campfire, this is the place for you. My name is Tyler Hendricks, located in the great state of Idaho, and today I have with me my good buddy, Mr. John Huber, for the second time, who's going to talk to us, uh, give us some stories, and talk to us about some big life changes happening. Yep, I had to come back and tell you a story. Because I just felt like after we were done last time, I mm -hmm. just I had this one thing out, the story I wanted to tell. Yes. It's too long to tell. And, and you need a long format I, podcast I needed, to get yeah, it out. Exactly. I needed <laughs> more time and, mm -hmm. and headspace to do this. And, and now I have the time. I'm happy you've chosen and big fish stories yeah, and to give it to, to us. I wanted to tell this story. I think I mentioned this to you. I wanted to tell this story as a gift to young people mm -hmm. or not even young people, people that are are looking for their path yep. people that are you know what what do i do with my life what mm -hmm. do i want to do what right. do i want to be when i grow up what right. do i want to be period because last time we recapped and talked about your life mm -hmm. and how you found purpose in the mm -hmm. outdoors yep. and we kind of talked about what would your life look like without that sure uh so i'm interested to hear your take for the young people yeah so so my story revolves around kind of four four things uh, well, maybe more than four things. Fly fishing, obviously. Um, I want to talk right off the bat a little bit about societal norms, mm -hmm. the red pill versus the blue pill. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Joseph Campbell a little bit. Um, and I want to talk about whales and dolphins. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I'm excited. So my story begins 30 years ago and uh, a young man obsessed with Jacques Cousteau. Mm -hmm. When I was, when I was little, I had the Jacques Cousteau books and PBS was one of the four stations you could watch on TV and Jacques Cousteau came on and John was there <laughs> and I watched Jacques Cousteau and I loved Jacques Cousteau my whole entire life to the point where I decided as an adult, I'm going to spend my life with whales and dolphins. I want to be around marine mammals. So was Jacques Cousteau, tell me about the, I never, I've never seen it. You've never seen any Jacques Cousteau no, episodes? No, tell me about it. Jacques Cousteau is like one of the first like, uh, you know, just nature programs, mm -hmm. you know, it was Jacques Cousteau with his very heavy French accent going into places in the oceans mm -hmm. that nobody had ever been and, and filming things nobody had ever seen. And, and like old school planet earth, very old school planet mm -hmm. earth, <laughs> like the original planet. Love earth. it. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so Jacques Cousteau, yeah, he was just kind of, kind of my hero growing up just cause he got the, he invented scuba diving. Mm -hmm. that, that's Jacques Cousteau invention. Uh, oxygen tanks all yeah. that wow yeah that's uh he just wanted to spend more time underwater and mm -hmm. was trying to figure out how to do it so um so anyways i just was obsessed with marine mammals and so i figured you know how how do i get there mm -hmm. what's the path i take and in high school i, I thought marine biology mm -hmm. this is this is how i'm going to spend my time with whales and dolphins i'm going to be a marine biologist mm -hmm. so i started applying to colleges and there was two colleges in the U u.s that had undergraduate programs in marine biology and I wanted to dive right in. And the University of San Diego was one of those. So I applied, was accepted to the University of San Diego, and subsequently went to college there and began my undergrad study for marine biology. That lasted six whole months. At which point I was, I'm not a smart man necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> I can tie knots and tell you where some fish live uh -huh. and I write a little bit, but some things escape me. Mm -hmm. And, um, Marine biology definitely escaped me. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't prepared for it. Mm -hmm. uh, what was necessary to achieve in that field. So my precept called me into her office. She said, John, you know, when you get your marine biology degree, if you were to get it, what, what do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, I want to study marine mammals. And then she said, well, John, you know, you're, you're right by the Scripps Institute. Do you, you understand that you're in a competitive field? It's like, no, I never really thought that I was in a competitive field field necessarily. Mm -hmm. I thought people do this for joy. She's like, well, they do, but a lot of people do. And so I just wanted to explain to you what you can expect with your marine biology degree. And she said, how does six months somewhere in the Arctic circle, taking 
mud samples off the ocean floor sound to you? <laughs> and I said, that sounds awful. Mm -hmm. She said, switch your major. <laughs> oh, she, that bluntly. Yeah. yeah. So I did. Mm -hmm. I actually dropped out of college for six months, came back, switched my major to English. And here I am today. So my story begins with this want to be around marine mammals. Mm -hmm. So, um, no. What was it? What was it that drew you to that? Was there any sort of? Uh, I just grew up in the outdoors, hunting yeah. and fishing with my family and camping. I was always outdoors, outdoors, like outdoors in Idaho. Yeah, I, compared to marine. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, I definitely grew up on the Oregon coast a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, being in Portland, and uh, I, I can't say specifically what it was. Mm -hmm. I think it was the fact that maybe I was seeing animal mammals for the first time that were sentient. Mm -hmm. That that you you could tell without question had thoughts and feelings right and, and communicated with each other mm -hmm. and, and worked together and stuff so so that was i think that was probably a big part was yeah. just that this realization that human beings are not the only sentient creatures on this planet mm -hmm. so so that was not a big appeal to me and and just to be outside and mm -hmm. the open ocean and to be able to do all that cool stuff right um you know tracking these animals and trying to figure out the communication and all mm -hmm. that so um so with that kind of said, you know, societal norms, the red and the green pill, the red and the blue pill. Mm -hmm. As young people in the United States, we're given kind of a general path by society that, you know, grade school, high school, college, work, family, house, car, retirement, mm -hmm. vacation home, you know. Right. We're all kind of led down this path. and. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that's the red pill mm -hmm. and, and nothing wrong with taking the red pill. Sure. If that's your, what you want to do, you find your passion. Fantastic. The blue pill, I think applies to the people that kind of live here, right? The people mm -hmm. that have been on your show, obviously mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. you know, the skiers, the cross country skiers, the hunters, the anglers that all live around here. They all took the, the people who come here for fun and then things start to fall in place for them. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, it's a hard decision as a young person, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're kind of given this time frame out of high school, beginning of college. Tell me what you want to be. Mm -hmm. Like, I, It's hard when you're that young, you don't think you're right. that young at the time. So it's, those are hard decisions to make. And it feels you feel pressure, you can right. feel it from family, you can feel it from friends, from coworkers, from mm -hmm. your neighbors, and just the general society you live in, right? So it's almost the people who want who who tried to escape that, you yeah. know, to escape the things where people are saying you need to start thinking about your life. Like, what are you sure. going to do for a living? How are you going to provide for a family? Sure. It's those people who almost became a little bit overwhelmed with that and was yeah. like, I don't know, but I know that I find peace, uh, if I do this yeah, and they escape. Yeah. So, you know, here I am now without my marine biology degree mm -hmm. and, and these two pills sitting in front of me, what do I do here? What do I do here? Mm -hmm. You know, do I, do I want to go work for a newspaper? What do I use a writing set? What can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, since I can't be the marine biologist I want it to be. Um, so, you know, I, I grew up in the outdoors and much like our last conversation, fly fishing has been a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. So I came to Sun Valley, not necessarily with a firm plan other than I knew I wanted to be outdoors, right? Mm -hmm. And in fresh air, clean water. So I come to Sun Valley, I'm here for a year or two and decide I better go think about the other pill here for a second. So mm -hmm. I run back to Portland, uh, leave here, cry like a baby. Go back to Portland, subsequently shatter my leg, break my leg in 13 places, surgery, titanium rod in my leg that's still there today. Mm -hmm. um, and now, what age was this? Oh, gosh. It was, oh, year, two years after college. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, couldn't run, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. Didn't run for years after that. Mm -hmm. Eventually got, got back fully to where mm -hmm. I was before. Um, but I had this time now on my hands, lying there, you know, taking meds, recovering, bones healing. What do I want to do with my life? What do I want to do with my life? So I ended up calling Scott Schnebly at Lost River Outfitters, moved back to Idaho after I heal. And 
uh, begin guiding. And I tell people all the time at the big wood river healed my leg. I, mm. I used to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear waders. I'd go out in the morning, mm -hmm. no matter how brisk it was and wet wade mm -hmm. and just feel that, that cool water on my leg. And right. I swear to God, 10 years of that got me back to normal. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, and through the course of all this, I'm, I'm reading voraciously mm -hmm. because I, prior to being able to get back on the river, I didn't have a lot to do and Netflix didn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you do? So right. I, I read, I read, I read, and I found a box of books in my parents' garage. It was my sister's college books, my oldest sister, Kathy. And one of the books was Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. the power of myth. And I thought, Hmm, this is interesting. Power of myth. So I start reading Joseph Campbell. I read the power of myth. I love it. Mm. So I find another Joseph Campbell book, a hero with a thousand faces. It's all about the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, this is, this is about, about a path. Mm -hmm. This book is about the path that everybody's been on through history mm -hmm. and how they, all these paths resemble each other. Is that primarily his, uh, his the things that he writes about or, or paths or what, yeah, the, what's his main thing? His main thing is the hero's journey. Okay. Is the, you know, uh, comparing the story of Jesus Christ to the story of Luke Skywalker, mm. same story, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Different things, but mm -hmm. essentially the, you know, the power of myth is that we're, we're all on the hero's journey, men and women. We all go into the woods. We have these adventures and these things that shape us and we come out of the woods mm -hmm. and it might happen multiple times for some people. Some mm -hmm. people it might happen once. Some people it might happen 50 times, but you're always on the hero's journey, right? Mm -hmm. We all are. <clears throat> and and I, I remember thinking to myself, you know, this is this is something that's important to me. Uh, this this man, this this idea of the hero's journey. So the next book I get by Joseph Campbell is called the Joseph Campbell Companion. Please, everybody, if you have a young person in your life mm -hmm. that is struggling or a friend that just doesn't know what they want, go get this book for them. Go order the Joseph Campbell Companion. Okay, and ask them to read it, and and then let them decide what they think of it. Shit. I have to read right? it now. Yeah. You have to read this book. So the Joseph Campbell companion, one of the main quotes from Joseph Campbell that I took from the moment I picked up his books to this very day is follow your bliss and doors will open where there were no doors before. Mm -hmm. So I decided lying there with my broken leg that this, this was my path. I'm going to follow my bliss mm -hmm. and see where doors open. Mm -hmm. and. And so I decided, well, fly fishing is it. I can't be a marine biologist. Mm -hmm. So it's fly fishing. Right. So I come to Idaho. I become a fly fishing guide. I mm -hmm. work in fly fishing for 30 years. I become an outfitter. Um, I do all these things. I, I begin writing about fly fishing. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly I have a degree in English that is being used. Mm -hmm. Not with intent. I didn't, that wasn't my plan. Mm -hmm. But fly fishing, my bliss led me to back to my education. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so kind of, it's just this crazy idea of I can, I can do this thing that I love and see where it takes me, mm -hmm. which is great. But now how do you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. You got to have health insurance, right? You got to have car insurance. You have to have an automobile. Yep. You have to have rods, reels, flies, rent, yeah. You know, so I think that's always the biggest question for yeah. people when they're young, especially. Yeah. So how do I follow my bliss and survive? Right. Right. So this is what, where I deep dive into the power of top ramen, Tyler. <laughs> I'm excited for this. People top ramen will set you free. <laughs> 10 I'm, cents a pack. Thank you. Top ramen will set you free. <laughs> you can live on nothing. You can achieve the things you want to achieve by taking a pack of top ramen and throwing some vegetables at mm -hmm. it or some canned chicken or whatever you need to do mm -hmm. to survive. And you can survive bare bones for as long as you're willing to chase that bliss. Right. And it is bare bones living. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe you don't get to get married right away or have a family right away because you got to get some other things in place first. Right. right. But you can achieve all these things. I sure. know plenty of married fishing guides with children that are now in college. Right. Um, so, so it's, Completely achievable. So, yeah. So the, I think a lot of people forget that too. A lot of people forget that they, especially if they've built up a certain way of living for themselves where mm -hmm. they've accumulated X amount 
And then they have problems when they do decide to chase their bliss. Mm -hmm. They all of a sudden are unwilling to get rid of the things that they're maintaining per month much harder. And I think, I think most people would be happier if they decided to get rid of those things that they're maintaining per month and pursue their bliss. Yeah. Or like me, just don't start with them. <laughs> <laughs> just, just never accumulate. Just don't have them to ever. begin with. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, I think I think that's a hundred percent right. The more that you accumulate and you're unwilling to get rid of, yeah. the harder it is later when you realize, oh, I'm not happy. Yeah, and I never did pursue my bliss. Yeah. Anyways, sorry. Continue. No, not at all. Um, so, so the idea of of kind of following your bliss and. And having these these norms set upon you that mm-hmm. you should be this, you should follow this path. Mm-hmm. This is how it's done. Like those are nice sentiments, mm-hmm. but that's not my reality. And it's not the reality for a lot of people in towns like like Ketchum or Peekaboo or totally. Vale or mm-hmm. Apalachicola, wherever right. it may be, right? Um, you know, these these are these sentiments are are not these are for the blue pill people, mm-hmm. or those are for the red pill people, not the blue pill people. Right. So anywhere that you've needed to start out eating top ramen continually <laughs> in order to make it work exactly. for yourself. It doesn't have to be fly fishing. No. It could be watercolor. Sure. You could be an artist, a sculptor, mm-hmm. a poet. A ski bum like a everyone ski is bum. here. You yeah. could be the best dog walker in the damn world. <laughs> right. No, not kidding. Yeah. You know, what? whatever it is. You know what? <laughs> one thing that drives me crazy with, with people hmm. these days is the whole, oh, my children and video games. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of damn money in video games. Totally. Right Are you kidding me? Right. You can have people watch you play video games. You mm-hmm. can design video games. Yeah. There's YouTubers making millions of dollars yeah. just playing video Get games. Get on a video game team. It. Yeah. You can travel the world. Yeah. Right. You can have a following. There's right. famous video game. Yeah. When we were playing Pac-Man as a kid, that yeah. was that didn't that thought didn't live in people's minds. No. But it it's a reality now. Totally. If that's your bliss. Mm-hmm. Don't let anybody tell you not to follow it. Right. Don't listen to that. I agree with Eat that. Eat some damn top ramen and go <laughs> play those video games and chase it. Right. Chase it to the end. Mm-hmm. Right. So have a hobby outside somewhere, but chase that. <laughs> chase it. Make it, make it your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, make it your program. Um, so I'm graduated college. I have a degree. I went to a private Catholic high school. Mm -hmm. I went to a private Catholic college. Mm -hmm. Money was spent Mm -hmm. so that I could be a fishing guide. Some of that money was my parents. Most of it. I had a lot of student loans Mm -hmm. and forgiveness because I had three sisters and a mother all in college when I started. So Mm -hmm. I could afford some things with some grants. And Mm -hmm. so I was able to go do these things and, and have this degree. And in the meantime, I'm following my bliss. And there's people in, in my life and in the background and in society that are waiting for me to snap out of it, right? Mm-hmm. To like, when's he going to get a real job? Oh my God. How many times <laughs> is I on the river when my people I was guiding mm-hmm. said, so w- when are you getting a real job? Yeah. It's like, you know, as soon as the trailblazers call me, right. I need a point guard. I'm there. <laughs> trust me. So <laughs> craziness. So, um, so I'm trying to just kind of make, make sense of all this in mm-hmm. my head. And then one day I'm, I'm now so deep into fly fishing. I've started traveling with fly mm-hmm. fishing. I think we talked about quite a bit. Um, and Bryant Dunn, Bryant Dunn lives here locally. Yeah. Bryant's a good friend of mine. Yeah. Bryant called me one day. He's like, Hey, you want to go to Bhutan? It's like, where the hell is Bhutan? Mm-hmm. Well, it's in the Himalayas. Mm-hmm. There's a thing there called, there's some brown trout there and there's a thing called snow trout and mm-hmm. masir and just some exotic fish. It's like, man, this, <laughs> this is really exotic. Yeah. You know, this is beyond the Bahamas yep. and this is beyond the Yucatan. This is exotic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to go. Mm-hmm. So I go. Um, when was this? Oh gosh. I have no idea. Um, Years ago. <laughs> long time. Yeah. 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 I was still working at Silver Creek Outfitter. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's a good 15, 20 years ago. Gotcha. And um, we go to Bhutan and we're fishing brown trout and I, catch a snow trout which mm-hmm. is a carp um, but they look trouty mm-hmm. and i was like wow this is a really strong powerful fish and mm-hmm. these are really hard to catch even though i caught one by accident right so now i start targeting these fish while i'm in bhutan mm-hmm. and and i start figuring out how to catch them mm-hmm. um, even though i'm having difficulty it's they're very hard but i'm into that right mm-hmm. so i come back to the united states and i i've been freelance writing already 
and John Randolph, who was the editor at Fly Fisherman Magazine, is somebody that I had submitted with before. He had been out to Sun Valley and fished with me. I had a relationship with John Randolph, Mm -hmm. the editor, and thought, I'm going to write about snow trout. Nobody's heard of this thing. Yeah. And I'm going to submit it to Fly Fisherman Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I did. And I got a phone call a few weeks later from John Randolph. Hey, John, uh, we're just wondering why you're trying to pull a fast one on us. It's like, what, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. He's like, nobody in our editorial staff has ever heard of a snow trout. <laughs> we don't know what you're talking about. Yep. I can't imagine running this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, John, I didn't make it up. Right. <laughs> I, I sent you pictures. Right. And, and why would I make it up? Yeah. And now I'm kind of perturbed. Which like, would be actually a really funny thing to do. If it was April 1st, <laughs> sure, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> See if you can get them to post it. Right. <laughs> um, so John, I, I'm, I'm a little tweaked now because I've worked hard on this and, and I said, John, I don't care if you don't want it. Somebody else does. I'll send it. I'll send sure. it to somebody else. And he said, no, 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 wait a minute. Just give us seven more days to do some mm-hmm. research. Fine. Seven days goes by. John Randolph calls me again. So John, the editorial staff now believes that this fish exists, but we don't believe they eat flies because uh-huh. everything we've read says they eat vegetation off right. the rocks. You know, they scrape the algae, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And well, John, look closely at the pictures. The flies are stuck in their mouth. <laughs> I, I didn't stick the flies in their mouth. I caught these fish. Yep. These are mouth caught, fly caught fish. Right. I don't know what else to tell you. Mm-hmm. If you don't want the article, please tell me. Right. No, we're going to run it. Mm-hmm. I believe you. We're mm-hmm. going to run it. So they run it. I don't think anything of it. I don't even know what the release date is. Mm -hmm. Uh, I get a call from a college buddy of mine and he says, uh, John, um, I just want to say congratulations, uh, for, uh, appearing in fly fisherman magazine. Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh, they, they ran the article. Finally. He said, I don't know about the article, but I just saw your name in their 40 year anniversary timeline. Mm-hmm. And the, the timeline goes, Jimmy Carter, George Bush, John Huber. Wow. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, I got to go because mm-hmm. I need to call some people. Yeah. Click. I started making some phone calls mm-hmm. like, hey, my name just got listed next to two presidents because right. I fly fish <laughs> and I write. Right. It's like, wow. You know, this is. That's awesome. This is Joseph Campbell. Like Mm -hmm. this is coming true. Totally. Follow your bliss and doors will open where there were no doors before. Right. And I came back and I get published and I'm in this 40 year timeline Mm -hmm. and it's all because of fly fishing that returns me back to writing and things are starting to, the circle is starting to close. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, this is, this is really incredible. I'm glad Mm -hmm. I took the blue pill. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. And so subsequently I continue to write, I Mm -hmm. continue to fish. I write a few books. Um, and eventually, um, I, I have an outfitting career. Uh, I enjoy myself. I build peekaboo angler from Mm -hmm. scratch. I live in quaint town at Mm peekaboo and then COVID comes and things start changing a little bit. And and I start reflecting on life a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about Joseph Campbell more and more yep. over the last couple of years and following your bliss. Mm-hmm. And I think to myself, you know, and we talked about this the last time that I, I want to go down to Mag Bay and, and be close to these snook and, yep. and these mangroves and be mm-hmm. in that environment. And, and then sometime after the course of when you and I spoke last, mm-hmm. uh, I made a comment to a friend of mine and said, you know, it'd be great if you, if you bought my house kind of mm-hmm. tongue in cheek. Um, and he looked at me and said, I'll buy your house. Okay. I said, okay, let's have a conversation. Mm-hmm. So for the next three months, we had a conversation. So subsequently, I have sold my house. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> my bags are packed. And on Tuesday, I will hitch my boat up and I will drive to Magdalena Bay, uh-huh. where I will begin my new life in that environment that I wanted to be in so bad as a young person. Yep. Coming back full circle. Yep. And the irony or the beauty, I guess, of it is, is it's whale watching season now in Magdalena Bay. Right. Where the gray whales now come into Mag Bay with their little ones Mm -hmm. and have no problem coming right up to your boat and hanging out with you. Wow. And it was kind of when I started putting all this stuff together, I thought, I want to talk to Tyler again. Yeah. Because. This is a full circle. This thing started 30 years ago with whales and dolphins. And here I am 
back to whales and dolphins. Right. Because of the blue pill, mm-hmm. top ramen. Yep. Joseph Campbell, mm-hmm. some fly fishing. Yep. You know, all these things. I stuck to my guns and yeah. followed my bliss. Right. So I just wanted to express this today. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get this out to the youth of this valley mm-hmm. and anybody else that's watching. And I don't care if you're youthful. You can be 60 years old. And, and mm-hmm. if you're still like, hey, I've always wanted to be this. Yep. Go be it. Mm-hmm. Eat the top ramen. Yeah. It tastes good. They have different flavors. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. Um, no, that's awesome. I'm super happy for you. Thank you. Like, thank congratulations you. on this. And I can thank you. 100% from knowing you for so long, mm-hmm. I can see this as uh, as a giant circle of, of, uh, uh, of your life, like, culminating to this. Yeah. And who knows what that's going to lead to after this. Sure, sure. Um, but I'm that's, not in the hall of fame or anything. And it's, you know, you're in the hall of fame of fly fishing, uh, according to field and stream. Well, <laughs> fly fisherman, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just, it was very important to me yep. that, that just people, young people, especially understand that there are, there's more paths than the one that looks like it's plainly laid out. In totally. Front of you. And if there's something you want to do, don't be scared to do it. Right. Go do it. And do you feel that? Do you feel that this is something that's built into the universe that it kind of opens up things for you? Or do you think that yes. it's okay? Without question. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. These like doors shut and then doors open when yes. you pursue your bliss. A hundred percent. Yes. Uh, I had no idea that fly fishing would take me back to a writing career. You right. Know? Not, and, which is kind of what I wanted to start with. And yeah. then I had no idea that writing would take me back to Mag Bay and the, mm-hmm. and the, the whole whales and dolphins thing. So, so literally I went from, I just want to work with marine mammals mm-hmm. to I'm going to go live with marine mammals. I'm going to write, I'm going to fly fish. I'm going to live in a peaceful little town. I'm going to do all the things I've ever wanted, right? but only cause I just chased the one thing, mm-hmm. but it opened up all those doors. Right. Right. And, and I see this, this can happen with anybody. Mm-hmm. I see it. I see it up and down this valley. Oh yeah. You know, a hundred percent. I think this is a, a, one of those locations where you get to see it often because like you said, mm-hmm. those people are choosing a different pill, uh, than the rest of what society is choosing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I can see it in my own life. Uh, you know, I, I luckily was blessed to be raised here. Sure. Um, but still, I think from being around people who were choosing that other pill, I mm-hmm. kept going, I don't have to live like everybody else tells me. I oh, have I to see live. it with you. Yeah. How old were you when we started doing Plum TV? Yeah, I was 19. You were 19. You I want, thought you I was, were a teenager. Actually, I might have even been right? 18 because yeah. you you want to know what's funny about you were starting quiet. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Stood behind the, hid behind the camera. I wanted to hide behind the camera. <laughs> I mean, this is different. You know, this is, this uh-huh. is different for me. But- you know, I remember, um, even, even when I was, you know, not knowing where, what I wanted to do with my life, yeah. but I was still hunting and fishing. I was still mm-hmm. pursuing those things, but I had no clue what I wanted to do. Right. I remember, uh, Trace Balding reached out to me from Plum TV and he had, you know, I, at the, ch- at the church that we both went to, I was doing the PowerPoint stuff at the age mm-hmm. of 18, like putting up, you know, sermon sure. slides, services, stuff like that. Yep on PowerPoint. Um, and I have no clue what he saw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was 18. I was partying continually. I had no work ethic, yeah. but I pursued hunting and fishing like nobody else around me. Yeah. Um, and he must've saw that desire for the outdoors. And he was running a local television program program called Plum TV. Sure. He must've saw that and thought that would be a great combination since he can combine the visual parts with the outdoor parts. That's what I need. So he kept pursuing me to be an intern. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I finally showed up to that day and I kept telling him, I know nothing about video. Mm-hmm. I know, I don't know anything about any of this stuff. Why would you hire me? And he goes, just come in for the interview. Yeah. I showed up in blue jeans, white t-shirt, uh, tennis shoes. And I looked around at the other interns who were applying for the job and they actually were like dressed nice. They had notes prepared. Like they were ready for this internship. And I sat down in the chair being like, 
sorry guys, I know I'm not the person and yeah. Trey wasn't in the room, but it was, a, it was some other producers. And I was like, I'm not your guy. Like, yeah. I don't know anything about any of this shit and you're going to have to teach me everything <laughs> from scratch. And right now I'm just enjoying working at the airport and mm-hmm. fishing and hunting. Like that's all I care about doing. Sure. And literally the next day they called and gave me the internship. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. And I showed up I showed up really going, what am I doing? Like, this is a clear door opening for me and giving me a path, but why, like, this doesn't even feel, this feels like, um, like someone is like grabbing me and putting me in this situation. Um, and I, you know, I related to God, like directing my path Mm -hmm. through this, but, uh, I, 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 and, and continually like plum TV shuts down mm-hmm. and I'm sitting in my office while people are literally ransacking the place. Like and taking you had already gear. found joy in this. I had found, I, yeah. Okay. So yeah. And somebody's trying to take that from you. Now, yes. Right. Like, yeah. So I had finally figured out, like, I love editing. I love mm-hmm. videography, but it took me that internship and those guys putting up with me, shout out to those guys who were putting up with me. Cause I can't believe they did for that long. Yeah. But I learned everything I could from Plum TV as an intern, and uh, and it set my career uh, in this route. So I can still hunt, I can still fish, and pursue those things. This studio is built off of video production, yep. um, so I can still do all those things and pursue those things. And I found a career that I loved. Um, but I remember Plum and you found a family. You have a wife, yes wife and a beautiful everything. child, and yeah, everything. I went to school. Um, for motion graphics, because I realized nobody around here knew how to integrate motion graphics into Mm -hmm. video. Mm -hmm. So I went to school for like just a quick internship school, like nine months, went to school, uh, and came back and I'd met my wife through that school Mm -hmm. and she's moved here and we've had a a daughter and all that kind of stuff. But I remember going back to Plum TV, Plum TV, shutting down and sitting in my office going, what am I going to do? Like now Plum TV's out it was just barely at that time frame where people were starting to post videos online for promotional purposes. And I got two phone calls, one from Sun Valley museum of art mm-hmm. and one from St. Luke's while I'm sitting in my office, wondering what I'm going to do. Sure. Both of them saying, we heard the news that plum TV is shutting down, but we really need these videos done. We don't care if they're on TV. So you would say some doors were opening. That was like the <laughs> clearest door. And I literally was like, well, I guess like whatever you were going to pay them, yeah. you can pay me and I'll finish up these pieces. And those two clients I've maintained since yeah. that phone call. Um, and it set me up for starting my own production company, yeah. focusing on digital content, online media. So let me ask you a question. Let me be yeah. the interviewer. Sorry. Me. Now I all no, I want to interview now jumped for into so, a full circle. So when this was all happening, um, you know, you, you knew that videography yeah, was, videography, was yeah. a bliss mm-hmm. and you've started doing big fish stories. Yep. How many times have you been invited hunting and fishing because of this show? Oh, tons, <laughs> tons. Yeah. So, so and something w- you love to do is yeah. leading to more things that you love to do. Yeah. I right? mean, being able right. to interview people like you, luckily we've been friends before this, sure. but this is such a compelling format to be able to invite people who are really good at their craft. Yeah. Um, I mean, having Benji Hill on from yeah. alone is, I don't think I could ever yeah. do that if I didn't learn how to do all this. I don't even think I'd have a desire to start a podcast yeah. if I didn't originally have those doors open for sure. me. I mean, I don't um, know Benji, but he took a big blue pill. Yeah. Like, oh my God. <laughs> he takes one every day. He takes a big blue pill every single day. Yeah. Um, I mean, that guy is living his bliss every single day. Sure. Um, no matter what it is. And I think that resonates with most of the people in this Valley. Sure. Um, and it's weird, you know, I don't know if we want to jump back to this, but when you're saying this Valley is changing, mm-hmm. it's weird to see some people coming in who may not be taking that blue pill. And so that's yeah. kind of what I'm seeing a little bit is a lot of locals and residences here are going, this is an an interesting group of people who are coming in here who it's almost like people are seeing them as like, they didn't ever need to put in their dues. And I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah. I mean, to me, you should, I mean, they're pursuing what they want to pursue, so we can't hold it against them, but is it taking away from what we have and hold dear here? No, people in this Valley and people that live that blue pill life that they've paid with their, blood and sweat yes. and bodies. They were eating and the top ramen here. My, 
<laughs> my two shoulder surgeries from yeah. fishing. You know, this is, yeah, we pay. Yeah. You pay for this lifestyle. Right. One way or another, you pay through, you know, mm-hmm. things you sacrifice mm-hmm. and, and parts of your body that you sacrifice. Right. Um, and there's a respect level amongst people like that. There's a respect for, sure. for looking around and going, wow, they've really put in yeah. their time into making this life happen for themselves here. Yeah. I mean, is that, what is the 10,000 hour rule? Is that what it's called? Yeah. I mean, I think that's silly. Oh yeah. When you're hundreds of thousands of hours into something, it's like 10,000 hours and you're right. an expert. Come on. Come on. Really? Come on. Right. But, but no, it's, it definitely rings true up and down the valley. Yeah. And, and for the people that are, have moved here, you know, they moved here with families mm-hmm. and, and those children Listen to me, children. Is that the camera I'm looking at? <laughs> yeah. Listen to me. Listen to me. Follow your bliss. Yeah. You you have an opportunity in this valley to do that crazy stuff and nobody's going to look at you sideways. Totally. 100%. Back in the city growing up, yeah, you got looked at. Kind right. Of like, like, man, you leave the city limits every day. Right. Every weekend, you're driving over the mountains mm-hmm. range. You're like, what, what's going on? <laughs> right. But here, yeah, it's just every day. Yeah, it took me a while to realize when I would be traveling outside of this valley and talking to people about the things that I love to do and the way that I've uh-huh. made a career for myself. It took me a while to realize that they are not able to relate. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. they took a pill at a very young age and sure. that's the pill that they followed. And it's about making a comfortable life for themselves. And that's sure. about it. Um, and it took me a while to realize when people were giving me like weird looks, even with, even with hunting, like, what do you mean? You, you, as simple as something for me that I've been doing my whole life. Yeah. What do you mean? You only eat deer and elk for red meat. Like that was a very weird concept for them. We're here. I can tell anybody about that. They get it. And I, I don't want people to misunderstand me or you or any of us in the sense that there is nothing wrong with doing your nine to five. Totally. If, if for example, your bliss is your family, Mm -hmm. maybe you've got a 12 year old and a 13 year old at home. Right. Maybe that's your bliss. Yeah. hundred percent. Maybe getting up in the morning and pouring concrete or waiting a table Mm -hmm. to get back to your bliss Mm -hmm. is not a whole lot different than what we're talking about. A hundred percent agree. It's just there are opportunities for other people who don't want that type of life. Yes. You that don't they can have be accepted. to bleed for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. You don't have to. You can you can have a bliss that isn't outdoor oriented. Totally. You can, you can live in downtown. You can live in New York City and, sure. and follow your bliss. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be outdoors. But for those of you that that are are searching and searching in the outdoors, don't give that up. Totally. Don't give that up. Especially, no, agree. especially now, yep. especially now because the outdoors are at a premium right now. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. That space and that quiet space are at a premium. So. Yeah. Very true. So if you have a way to go get it, go get it. Cause it's good for the soul, right? Absolutely. So. Well, let's talk about real quick about, uh, your new adventure. Okay. Um, so tell me what are the plans right when you get there? Oh, plans. Uh, I, you know, as much as John yeah, Huber yeah. plans, uh, I believe I've rented a house. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's good. I mean, just camping out on the beach, that's fine too. There'll be some camping on the beach for sure, just because we're going to definitely hit some remote spots. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am driving down uh, one of my dear friends, Nick uh, Price, who's yep. a local photographer here and yep. world-class photographer. is going to drive down with me. Uh, he's going down to do a, a offshore fishing photo shoot for Costa Sunglasses. Oh, cool. And I'm also picking up my friend, Fast Jimmy, mm-hmm. in Laredo. Fast Jimmy is the best angler in the world that I know personally. Wow. And probably the best fly That's tire. high right praises. Now. It is high praises. Mm-hmm. And, um, but Jimmy it deserves it. He's, he's solid. Mm-hmm. He knows his stuff. He's a very, very fishy person. Yep. So we're picking up Fast Jimmy in Laredo. And Fast Jimmy is not mafia. He's just in the... Uh, <laughs> He's in the Georgetown Hall of Fame as a lacrosse goalie who happened to be a very fast person. So hell of an athlete back in the day, Jimmy. Yep. And so, so that's how he got to be fast, Jimmy. Um, That's awesome. So we're picking him up. So those guys will stay with me. Oh, through about the 20th Mm -hmm. and then they'll leave and I will be solo down there. Although I I have friends in town. I know Mm -hmm. people down there and I still plan to fish every day and write. If I'm not fishing, I'll be writing and and do you think right away you're going to be doing the whale watching before fishing, or are you going to be doing both? I'm going to see if the whales find me. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not going out with a daily plan mm-hmm. in in the sense that uh, 
I'll be rolling with the weather. Right. You know, especially in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be out there. And if, if I get a day I can get out, I'll get out. If I get a day I can't, I'm going to write about following your bliss. Yeah. About Mexico and travel. And are you I'll, thinking about like a, a book or anything like that? I've considered it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure yet. Okay. I need to go get my toes in the sand first. Mm hmm. Make sure I've got a fresh water supply and mm -hmm. food coming onto the table. Right. And well, at least top ramen. Yeah, at least some top ramen. We will send you top ramen. Yeah, yeah. I can throw some fresh tuna at it. Now, <laughs> yeah, right? so yeah. Nothing that's wrong awesome. with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yep. So I don't have a, a firm plan other than I'm going for six months. Mm -hmm. That's all I can be there legally, and then I'll, I'll apply for residency after that. And, gotcha. And then try and stay down there in a more permanent fashion if things work out mm -hmm. the way I'd like them to. Yep. Um, in the meantime, I will go down there and try and open as many more doors as I can, mm -hmm. whether I know I'm doing it or not. And that's really kind of the gist of this thing. Right. Is you don't have to think. You don't have it. to decide. You don't have to decide. You just have to follow your bliss. Mm -hmm. What's the thing that makes you want to put your pants on in the morning and go out the door? Right. And whatever that thing is, go pursue the crap out of it. Love and it. I don't know how to express this enough. Right. I've probably said it 50 times in the last 40 minutes. No, but it's. Follow your bliss. People need to hear it 50 times. Yes. Every four minutes. Yes. And if I'm not getting through to you, pick up Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. study your Joseph Campbell, read your Joseph Campbell mm -hmm. and, and understand that things happen in a progression it's faith just keep the faith that you know it's not all perfect tyler right yeah i've had hard times right I'm sure you've had hard times i'm sure mm -hmm. benji's had hard times oh. all of us have gone through ups and downs it's not this blissful thing you wake up to and it's you live in a garden every day it's not oh, yeah it's not the case but you take the good with the bad, and sometimes when you're living this life, maybe the lows are a little lower than normal, but mm -hmm. maybe the highs are a little bit higher. I think that and is 100% true. And you just got to recognize it and understand yep. that, hey, I'm in a low. There are times where you will spend the whole day in your bed crying, going, what right. have I done? Right. And then the next day, you're having the best day of your life. Right. I had a friend say something really interesting to me last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, she said... Um, she had bought a new uh, winter camping setup. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, I think maybe I'm just having a midlife crisis. I went and bought all this camping mm -hmm. stuff for the winter. <laughs> I said, what, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. It's like, I know you. you. You watch all the same Netflix shows I watch. That's mm -hmm. all the ones about climbing the wall, right. rafting the river, mm -hmm. bagging that peak. That's all those documentaries. Yeah. And I said to her, it's like, when you watch those people in those documentaries, do you ever stop for a second and think that person's having a midlife crisis? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that person's a badass? Yeah. He's adventurous. Right. And I want that. Mm -hmm. Like that's all you're doing. It's not a midlife crisis. You're seeing something you want and you're chasing it. Good for you. Right. hundred percent. Right. And you don't get to see oftentimes those people's lows. There are lows. Oh, of course. But they're so worth it compared to the highs. Yeah. There's a highs that you don't experience just living the red pill life. Nope. I'm, I'm very confused on which pill we're taking at yeah. this point, but I'm pretty sure the red pill life is the normal. There's life. not a right one. I don't <laughs> right. think there's a right one. Right. The right thing is just to follow your bliss. Totally. It doesn't matter if you do it in this setting or that setting. Right. It's just that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that bliss might be a trout or it might be watching your child graduate. Right. Um, or somewhere in between. <laughs> right. You know. So will we get to hear from you again? When's the next time you're planning on coming back? Oh gosh, I should be back at least briefly mm -hmm. in the summer just to pick up some things. Yep. If not, hang out and do a little bit of video stuff, maybe with you. Awesome. Um, yes. Um, but I don't have a firm plan mm -hmm. yet um, because I'm waiting to see what other doors open in the next six months. Right. And if there's a good one to step through, maybe I'll step through it or maybe I'll, I'll wait for the next one. Awesome. But yes, you. You haven't seen the last of me. Awesome. For sure. I'll be bugging you some more. Perfect. Love it. Probably call you with another story next yeah, week. Yeah, no, just keep doing tell. it. I have to tell this story. <laughs> Remember Tyler. all the stories when you come in. <laughs> we can get through them. And I thought this one was going to take three hours. Actually, didn't. no, it wasn't bad it was at like all. 20 minutes. Today. Wasn't bad at all. Not bad at all. Thank well, cheers to your new adventure. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yep. Super excited for you and definitely keep me posted. Yeah. I continue to appreciate what you guys are all doing here. You, awesome. and, your, you and your team Thank are, you. are fantastic. Thank you. 
it's been just world class just kind of watching everybody's stories yeah i just love it i get a kick out of it awesome well hopefully we can do a lot more so cheers to you cheers 